Hey guys, this is Mac is an one. And today, as I promised before, I'm going to be making my first of many programming lessons. So first of all, sorry if it sounds like I have a cold because I actually do this time. Um, but anyway, I must proceed. So the programming language I'm going to be focusing on today is C, and we're going to have a few more of C lessons. But C is a very low-level, hard-to-use language. So I'm going to explain to you why. So first of all, built into every processor is a language called assembler. Assembler is one of it's it's like very hard to use, but it's small enough that you can program into a processor. So to do something in assembler that would take a, a hundred lines in C, it might take a thousand lines or even more. Now C is known as symbolic assembler to some people because it is basically the same thing. You still have to manage your memory or else you'll mess something up. You can still deal with specific locations in memory. Um, and there's no like string variables and no classes. It's all instructions that you're giving. Now, luckily, people have written other C functions for you, such um, as included in string.h, studio.h, etc., that allow you to enjoy C more like it's a regular programming language. Um, the C syntax is kind of easy to get used to. Um, I know it was for me anyway. So um, let's get started. When you open up Xcode, you want to go up to File, New Project. Now you can go under Command Line Utility and Standard Tool. Now when you click Choose, you want to name it. We're going to call it Hello world. And I'm going to save it to my desktop. So now I'll click save. So now that standard tool is um, the, the it's the type of C program that Xcode lets you do. So we're not going to be doing a GUI for the C program. And the way we would do that, by the way, if we wanted to do one, would be to use something called Xorg or X11. But that wouldn't work on Tiger. Um, and it, it's it's very hard to do compared to Interface Builder. So we're going to save the GUI stuff for Interface Builder. Um, so you'll notice there are a few files here. Main.c and then our built executable that has it's read right now because we haven't compiled this app yet. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So first of all, if you click main.c, the code should appear here. If it doesn't, you can double click it and it'll appear in a new window. Now, they've already laid out the basic structure for um, our C application. This is where the code goes. This is pretty much mandatory. This is almost certainly mandatory. And this and this are, um, are mandatory. So I'll explain what all this does. Include studio.h isn't really a C function as much as a compiler function. I'll explain that later on in another lesson. But Studio stands for Standard I.O. And we're um, using someone else's thing that they've already written that's standard that everyone should have that um, has all the great functions that we're going to be using in this lesson. We might also, under this Include Studio line, do a hash include space left bracket string dot h and you have to get used to the format of hash include pretty much always looks the same except the the, the stuff inside the um, less than and greater than um, so these are actually files located somewhere on your computer and I'm not sure if spotlight will show them but there are a bunch of dot H's on your computer that are things that people have written for you. So now, this int main is a, it's like a void. A void is something that contains code. Now, if it's called main, then it will get run when the app is started. That's magic. The name main is what's going to happen when the app opens. You can create another one called int joe. And you don't have to put anything between the parentheses and use these curly braces, which you're going to have to get used to. And you can put code inside of here, but it won't run when the app starts. So the int that 
in that command means that this main function has to return an integer. And return is a simple um, instruction, so you return zero. An integer is a number, but it has to be a whole number. It can be negative or positive, but it has to be whole. It can't be a decimal. Okay, so right here is the actual root of the application, print hello world. So, or print f hello world. So this code right here, all it does is make hello world come out in the console or in the terminal that you're running it in. Let me show you what I mean. So if you click build and go, and I'll say save, then it will um, run and quit. Now hello world will now be here, not red anymore, and you can click it, press command C, and command V to paste it onto your desktop. Now unfortunately I already have a folder with the same name as it on my desktop, so I'll just open up something else and paste it in there. So since this is a terminal app, it will open with terminal and it prints hello world to the terminal. And that's it. Now we're not going to be doing it that complicated way. There's another way to do it that I'll show you. That's uh, like a, a terminal emulator almost. So I'm going to show you how to make this code more advanced than just printing hello world to the terminal that it's running in. So printf puts text in some file. And a file is obviously like a, a stream and a C file pointer means like it's either read write or append so you can either read write or append to any specific file there's a magic file that studio.h puts in here called stood out std out standard output and that is a file that's open as append and when we write to that file, that file is what the terminal is. So when we write to it, it writes that text that we've written to it to the terminal. So printf writes to a file. And if we haven't specified a, a file for printf to do, it writes the text to the file called stood out. Okay, so now that we've got that cleared up, you might still be a little bit confused. I'll explain it all to you in better detail in another terminal lesson where we actually use files more. So, here's what the application is going to do. It's going to ask us for our name. We're going to type our name, and then it's going to say hello space and then your name. So, first of all, we want to declare a place in RAM that we can put text into. So, with C, it's it's harder to do this easily. Um, we can declare, we can allocate a certain amount of bytes in RAM. So say we know their name is not going to be longer than 512 bytes. We're going to allocate 512 bytes, and a byte is like a character, a number, a letter, anything, into um, memory. So we're going to do care, C-H-A-R, space, the name of it. I'll just say name, left bracket, 512 right back bracket. So... Let's get started. When we did int main, we're declaring something called main that's going to return an integer. When we say car name, it's declaring a character, one character, in memory that we can do whatever we want with. But what the heck is this bracket bracket doing here? Left bracket 512 right bracket. That That's a good question. The brackets are there. We can get rid of those if you want, but they're there. So care name is one letter but we want it to be 512 letters and we don't want to have to make 512 cares the hard way care name one care name two and have to read every character into those no that's not cool there's no way to declare a string you can only declare care so we do care name and there's something called an array in C and it's a group of one type of variable. So we'll do care name left bracket 512 right back bracket. So when you have brackets right after a variable declaration before the semicolon, that's how many of those variables we're going to declare. So this this thing name is no longer one character. It's 512 characters because we can tell by this. So only in the de declaration do we do left bracket 
than the number of cares that are going to be in that right bracket. Now, say we want to access the first character in the array of characters called name. So it's easy to do this. You do name, left bracket, zero, right bracket. And zero is really the first one. It goes up to zero to 511, not one to 512, zero to 511. Don't ask me why they made it like that, but they did. So if we wanted to access the second character of the 512 that we have access to, we do one. Right now, you're probably wondering why I'm on the screen all of a sudden, but I'm just saying that this video went way longer than I expected. So if you want to see the rest of the video, check out C Lesson 1 Part 2. Goodbye.